Okay, now, if you um, thought in terms of energy flow for a moment, solar energy flow, now, we're at the wrong time of the year, but when these plants are green, again, do you see this, the link to the water cycle? When majority of the plants are narrow-leafed, are they going to catch much sunlight? No, they're not. And when they are what they call xerophytic, dry type, or uh, hydrophytic, wet type, that means waxy cuticles, narrow leaves, or like a prickly pear, a waxy uh, coating on it. All those plants adapted to either too little water or too much water have similarities, and one of their similarities is a slow growth rate. And if we can get uh, better types of plants, more mesophytic in the middle, it's, they're not really here, but you know, with broader leaves, a characteristic of those is rapid growth rates. So in a given time, you can put on more production. Okay, so as, as we look at this from a solar energy flow, automatically you start saying, well, this is below five too. And it's no surprise if you go to the mineral cycle, you go to each one of them because they're linked. We're really looking in, and you've all heard this, I'm sure, we're looking into the same room through four windows. Water cycle, mineral cycle, community dynamics, or uh, solar energy flow. So that's a, a useful way, and if you, can, if you can think like that, if this was Andy, I'd just be saying, okay, Andy, we've got a long way to go here. This could be a hell of a lot more productive. A lot better for wildlife, a lot better for cattle. So now you know you've got something to, to build towards, instead of just saying, well, this is what we've got, and it can't get any better, and, you know.